but I'm Paula from Fairy Chic Emporium and today I'm excited to share with you our latest project and commission which is this most stunning piece of furniture with all sorts of character in it. It comes in two parts and unfortunately I haven't got a wall high enough to show you them together but I'm sure you can get the gist. It's got all sorts of carvings all over it. It's got nasty white knobs that we're going to need to replace. Um, it's going to be quite a piece of work and for those of you that have seen the monk's pew that I did it's to go it's for the same lady and it's to go opposite it in her hallway so we've got to match it in um, to a certain extent with the colours that we use for that so my plan is using Frenchic uh, Wedgwood Green which is what we used before and we're going to use this in a more subtle way because I think it's too much to have had this piece all Wedgwood Green so we're going to stipple using my favourite tool, getting it right into all the grooves of all the carvings and then we're going to paint over the top in sugar puff which is a lovely creamy colour and then we'll, we shall hopefully be able to sand back and reveal some of the green that's underneath. So that's the first bit of the plan. Um, then I've bought some new stuff called um, leaf and foil size artisan enhancements and some gold leaf foil so we thought we could use some of the gold foil to pick out in particular this lovely great carving here to make it really pop out so that's the plan the first thing that we've got to do before we start we've um, given it a, a good wipe with the baby wipes everywhere to clean it off thank you Chalky <laughs> we're going to use some um, French cheek finishing coat to seal it off because as you can see on the main top there's lots of character and I love it, but there's some stain marks and things that I think are going to show through on the um, once we've painted it. So we're going to protect it with this first and then go ahead and paint it and do all the stippling that I've talked about. Um, also the, the, the top shelf on, on this one's got some ring stains as well, so that's going to need treating as well. So that's what we're going to do first is get, go ahead and treat it and dry it and then start some stipple stenciling. Right, so as you can see, we've stippled with our stencil brush all of the cracks and grooves on the top as well, because I'm hoping, even though the colour is quite subtle, that when it's got the sugar puff on we'll be able to rub back and bring it through. If we can't and if it doesn't show because it's too subtle um, we'll just do some dry brushing with the green on top instead but um, it was worth a try so I'm just going to show you because one of the things that French Chic boast about a lot is this amazing paint. This is a brand new tin, I haven't shaken it at all I could probably do with a screwdriver, but I'm opening it right in front of you live. Not a single bit of separation, no stirring required. We can just get cracking on and start painting, it's amazing. So what I'm going to do now is paint all of it over the top of all the green in the sugar puff for both pieces and then we'll come back and decide what we're going to do next. Right, as you can see it's taken quite a while but we've painted all of it in sugar puff, two coats, I think that's sufficient, um, we've done a sort of little touch up, so perhaps two and a quarter coats and um, we've thoroughly dried it off with a hair dryer. So work in progress, we didn't entirely know what we were going to do with this um, until we got to the next stage, so I'm still going to be doing some gold leaf um, on here. and. The next job that we are going to do is sand back and see what happens, see how much of the green is revealed. So I'm going to use my 120 grit sandpaper to do that. Um, and then I'm also thinking about doing some crackle glaze um, technique, again artisan enhancements, which will involve me putting a layer of this product, not everywhere, but I thought maybe in these two panels here and the matching panels on the, the other bit, and, and that would then have to be left overnight before we can go on to the next stage with that. 
So that's what I'm going to do now, but we'll check in after I've done the sanding. Chalky's very partial to a bit of sandpaper. I like shredding it all over the floor, but it's not very good for your teeth, is it? No. Okay, we'll check back when we've done the sanding. Hiya. Right, back again. Obviously a new day. Uh, new haircut, new hair colour. Uh, I shall put a credit to my wonderful hairdresser at the end. Uh, but back to the uh, piece in question. So uh, since I last saw you, I've sanded it. And although some bits of green have come through, not enough, not enough... You'd have to look closely and know it was there, I think, to appreciate it. So that plan didn't particularly work. Um, and I've gone ahead and crackle glazed um, the panels that we talked about last time. So that's why they're looking a bit yellower than the rest. Um, I literally just put a fairly generous layer of the crackle text all over it. And I've left it for a good couple of days to properly dry. Uh, and that's the important thing, is that you leave it to dry. So what we're going to do now is the next layer which is put the green on and the thing with crackle glaze is not to do too much of this over the top you need to brush straight down and be done with it because if you keep brushing you will stop the effect from happening so if you watch as I do it let's have a go bit tricky getting into the corners I might have to go so as the paint starts to dry the crack should start forming. Just trying to get the balance between covering it and not going over it too much. So I'm being as gentle as I can. So that's covered enough. There's a few bits, but I don't want to risk. So already it's starting to crack, and I don't know if having a hairdryer will help speed that process up. What have you got? <laughs> Chalky's found a doorknob. <laughs> Think. Right, I'm going to go ahead and do what I was going to do anyway. So I've got a natural sponge here because these are quite textured. Um, you can buy these in craft shops. And I want to just remove some areas. So I'm going to do, while it's still wet, I'm just going to do some swirls. Because I don't want it to be even, I want some texture. I think I'm probably going to have to get a hairdryer to speed up the crackling process. So what I'm doing now has actually been quite helpful to the bits that weren't filled in as I went down with a brush. But when it starts cracking should have a good effect. Right, I'm going to get the hair dryer and dry it off so that you'll be able to see the uh, cracks start coming through. Right, well, we've completed the green panels. I'm not quite sure if I'm happy with it or not yet, and I think we just need to keep going before we decide whether we're going to add more sugar pot back to it. So I just, I want to keep going at this stage. So we've sought out some beautiful decoupage that we might be putting on it. Um, afterwards but first of all because this next process needs some time to dry I'm going to apply leaf and foil size which is um, another artisan enhancement which kind of acts like a sticky glue for the gold uh, leaf that we're going to be putting on so I'm literally going to brush on with my little brush all the areas of the grooves and when it gets tacky in about half an hour's time I shall be able to place the gold leaf over it and it will stick to it and then I can just peel it off so I thought it would be really nice to pick out the gold so it's going to be various places all over 
like so. I've not actually used this before, but I've seen lots of videos on it. It looks very cool. To the foil stage, um, I've just had a little go because I've not used this before. Really pleased with how that's come out. So I literally just brushed on the um, foil size into the creases, waited about 20 minutes or so. I could feel that it's it's a bit tacky. So then we put the sheet over it and it instantly sticks. And I'm using just a normal paintbrush to push it into the grooves and my fingers to make sure it's. Okay, so it's just simple as that. You can see it's gone into the grooves and then I literally just peel it off. Lovely. So I'm going to carry on with the, with my sheet of gold and do all the areas that I've done and then see if I want more or if it's sufficient. So uh, I'll come back when I'm, I'm at that stage. So we've done gold foil leaf all over it in different areas. I ended up doing it again more on the green because I just love it so much. It's so effective. Um, and I even took it to extremes on the cracks, the natural cracks from old woodworm that's been treated were all on the top here and I've actually put the uh, foil size in the cracks and put more gold along it and it's just sparkling everywhere. So because I think it really works because it isn't solid, it isn't a solid bit of gold, it's all just bits and pieces twinkling. We've started doing some decoupage with this gorgeous napkin that we found um, of sweet peas growing up here because the lady that we're doing this for is particularly keen on um, her garden and we thought it would just add a bit of specialness to the piece. So as you can see we've been piecing the napkin together to um, make it look as if it's growing up the uh, piece of furniture. So all we've done as before is take the two, two back layers of the napkin um, leaving us with a very fragile piece. We've torn round, I think it's much better to tear than to cut um, and then started just laying it out where we think we're gonna, gonna put it. So just to show you, you're gonna use the finishing coat to, and it's a little bit sticky on here where I put the gold, so I'm gonna have to be careful. So I'm gonna just paste round it. And as you can see, because the background colour, i.e. the sugar puff, is very close to the background colour of this napkin, it's just blending in as if the background's not there. You can barely see it, so it looks like it's been hand-painted on. Really effective. So that's the secret of decoupage, is choose a napkin that the background is the same colour as what you've painted, because then it will dissolve in. So we're going to carry on making this kind of ivy sweet pea grow strategically all over our piece of furniture. And then we'll come back and show you the finished bit. Right, so here we are, very, very nearly finished. Uh, it's been a bit of fun and games. We've had some fun and games with these areas because I didn't like them and I've kept changing them and doing different things to them. Um, the crackle glaze, and I've used different makes of crackle glaze in the past, really did, was it did show but it was very very fine and you had to ha practically have your nose on it to see it so I wasn't happy with that, it didn't, didn't show enough for what I wanted. Um, I still needed the green to be there um, because this piece is going directly opposite the monk's pew so it did need to match and tie in with it. So then we did some stippling um, with different colours, but that didn't work either. So I've ended up going back to Sugar Puff, blending it in so that the green wasn't quite so in your face as it started. So the decoupage is now, we decided to really focus on one side rather than have it on both sides. I think it looks more natural. Um, really like the way it's growing across and growing up. And even under there it's growing as well. So we're left with... Um, my beautiful ceramic knobs um, we've been playing around and I really like the idea of doing different ones uh, in different places so 
These two are going to go here and I'm going to need my husband to drill out some holes because they're a little bit narrow which is why they're not in place. So we thought the beige ones would look nice there. And then I've got these gorgeous green ones which are going to go here and here and finished off with that one but they're all different but the same shade of green and I think that will just finish it off and make it a really special piece. So we've learned lots during this um, project because I've using um, mediums I hadn't used before. Um, not sure that I would necessarily use the Crackle Glaze that brand again. I've used other brands which I've had a much better effect on but I love 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 this gold foil. It was really really effective. Just you could pick out anything. You could write your name um, with a paintbrush with the um, with the medium and then put the gold on it and rip it off and you'd have your name printed perfectly. It's, I just, I love it. I will definitely be using that again. So I hope you like the piece and uh, I certainly hope the customer does. Thank you very much for watching. Please follow my page and like it. It's at www.facebook.com forward slash The Emporium Furniture, which will take you straight to Ferrishig Emporium. Thank you. Until the next time.